Hey, what's up guys? This is Freddy Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And this tutorial today is really special because lately I was playing with this fluid simulation tool Liquid Gen from Jenga FX and I just had the best time of my life as a 3D artist. Like the two last weeks were amazing because it feels like this one is opening up a gate to finally getting an accessible and fast speed for your simulations. Previously, stuff like that just took me way too long. So I left this one to other artists, but now and this one is just opening up so many doors for me to in the future offer like these fluid simulations also to my clients and it's just unbelievable what you can already create with this alpha version of liquid gen just look at these examples you get the beautiful sheeting and tendrils everything that you want to have in your small to medium scaled fluid simulations of course also you can create bigger simulations for oceans and coast waves stuff like that with liquid gen but if you hack the settings just a little bit then you can also create like this beautiful small scale whiskers simulation even though that there is right now not a true whiskers solver in the tool you can if you hack the settings a bit definitely get results like those ones and yes i just had to share this one with you just be sure like the in-depth training of one hour of this splashes will be on my patreon where i go through the whole process with the materials the lighting the time remapping the exact settings and all of the good stuff okay but also now here on youtube i just wanted to give you a short direct dive into this tool you will then be like able in 10 minutes to also create these beautiful splashes so i would say you should just try the 14 days free trial of liquid gen and follow along with the train with me and maybe this is also something for you and your future clients all right so let's start with the training i'm using cinema 4d but of course you can also do this with blender and i just want to keep this process here really simple and short for you but just be sure if you need more cosmetic assets in combination with your fluid simulations then you find these products here in my Patreon shop. Right now in February, like still half of the kit will be included in your Knights membership. But anyway, I will also share one of these assets for free, which is like this long lotion dispenser. And I guess you can just download this one on my Gumroad. But now I'm just showing you here a little bit of scene preparation. So when I would copy one of those assets from my original kit into my scene, you can see already that this is quite a huge lotion dispenser. It's like half the size of a human leg and this figure has the size of 180 centimeters but when you want to do simulations for liquid gen then i think it's a good idea to just scale this one up so i could just click and drag this one to a size around like this one and this object here has the size of around like 15 meters so i think when you want to just use an object for liquid gen and combine it with a fluid simulation then maybe like the smallest should be like five meters but maybe the biggest one could be like 20 or maybe even 30 meters but something like this one 15 meters seems to be just like a good size here for my object and then it can also be a good idea for you if you want to work with your own assets that when your object has like a more complex hierarchy like here for example with inside pieces and outside pieces then you maybe want to just create like a simple collision object for it like I did it here so you can see that this one still has a reasonable resolution but this will be just way more easy for liquid gen to calculate the collisions like liquid gen will break up your object into boxes but i just assume that it will be just a little bit easier for liquid gen if you prepare like a more reasonable collision object just like i did it here all right and then you could already maybe rotate this one a little bit to maybe just have a little bit of a more interesting alignment to combine it now with fluid simulations i could also maybe just duplicate this object all right and move it over here and maybe I just want to rotate this one 180 to maybe have like a product shot like this one with two of this lotion dispensers okay so yeah if you want to already get like a beautiful product arrangement here that could be like good idea now I could select both of these collider objects and now I will just go to FBX export to export this one out as an FBX I will just click on the cockwheel here in Cinema 4D and just make sure that this one is set to select only so that I'm just creating an FBX out of these two objects and don't include my high-risk objects and all of that crap here okay so just export this and now let's fire up liquid gen okay so this one is kicking in directly from the start with this fluid simulation here on this torus but you can already see it like here in the node graph let's make this one just a little bit bigger we already know that we don't want to have like a collision object with this donut so you can just click on this node for example and just delete 
this one already and let's just make a little bit of housekeeping here so everything here on the right those notes and also the ground plane the lighting the camera the sky note the skybox the rendering all of that stuff this is the process that you want to do in cinema 4d or blender or whatever with the software that you choose so here in liquid 10 i would say we only want to focus on this process here with an emitter with collision objects and with different forces okay so already this is looking way more simple and now for example you could just click on the collider node click the shapes and drag it out leave the mouse button click on import to get an import node now you want to go to the file path and import in your fbx from cinema 4d there you go and now you can see in the viewport here you can make the whole movement here i think everything with your mouse so when i would hold down the left mouse button i can rotate around my scene when i hold the middle mouse button i can pan and when i spin the mouse wheel i can zoom in and out okay so this one probably will take some time so that you feel comfortable with it but it's kind of simple okay so basic navigation tools here but now you can see when we would click here on play that this is definitely not what we want so first the simulation here has way too many tiny details like those ones we want to have something with more beautiful tendrils which is just a bit more whiskers and we also don't want to have a continuous simulation here so let's just go back into the node graph and first i want to click on the simulation here and i also want to make this one just a little bit more simple to get a playback without pausing and starting it every time again and again so for example you could click on reset your simulation like every four seconds and this one is working right now in 60 fps so this one should reset every 240 frames here and you can see yes this one is working and now you don't have to worry about resetting your timeline all the time this is already a good start also we don't want to have like a continuous emission here we want to just fire one splash towards our collision objects here towards our beauty products so what you can do is to click on the emitter and first i also want to give this one like a lifetime of 10 so we don't have to worry about disappearing particles and we also want to set this one to fill emission mode you can see now we get like the splash of liquid this is already more what i would prefer here but now we still have like this force constant with a typical gravity value there so you could now for example just deactivate this one and drag out another force for example like a line force which will give you a vector for your movement so you could just position this one a little bit differently for visualization sake and i want to rotate this vector just a little bit towards our beauty products for example you shoot this one in a vector like this one you also have to give it a certain push strength okay so now you can already see that this one is firing towards our object okay like this one is a good start but i will just pause this once again and see where my liquid shape is so you can see like those position values maybe we will put this one first to zero and sometimes this one is not reacting directly so you want to go to your emitter and just make sure you show the emitter where you shoot your liquid from okay so now this one is positioned at zero but i want to just move this one over here for example to a position like this and i think now already like this one is colliding with our objects this is looking nice but i think like the fluid behavior is pretty ugly so you want to definitely change those settings and first what we don't want to have is we don't want to have a flip simulation so inside of your simulation container you want to drag this one to zero which will already help you to get better tendrils and more of a gluing together simulation okay so we want to have something like this one but still this one is breaking up into too many tiny little details too many little bubbles so i would say let's just first go down with the voxel size to like 50 percent of the previous value let's apply and reset this one this will already give us more resolution but i think like more resolution in that case will make it even more tiny and more detailed and this is not what you want here okay what you want to do now is to go to the density set this one to one for example and the main slider for you to get this one into a beautiful shape is to go crazy with the surface tension so you can see like the default value of 70 or 100 is not doing much here all right this is still looking horrible so let's just go up to maybe let's just see what is this one like this one seems to be 100,000. okay let's just test this value if this one is already giving us more beautiful tendrils it's working a little bit but it's still not great so maybe i will put this one to a million let's see what will happen now 
okay, slightly getting better. We get more beautiful sheeting. We get longer tendrils, but I think still maybe we can put this one up to 5 million. And let's see this one more time. What will happen now? Yes, the sheeting, the tendrils, everything is looking better. But at the same time, I just want to go to my simulation and I don't want to see the refraction. I would just deactivate this one. And I also want to put this one maybe to a gray value just to see my fluid body a little bit better. This will help you to judge how your body is looking. And I think like this one is going into a nice direction. We get beautiful tendrils, beautiful sheeting, beautiful viscosity, but still there is something that we need to change. I think that you have to go up with the sub steps, maybe to three, for example. Let's just see. This one will make your simulation even more precise. There will be more in between calculation steps. And now you can see that this one is definitely going into a beautiful direction here. The fluid body is just breaking up really nice. I really like what is happening there. Like this is already a really promising start here, okay? This is giving us nice sheeting, nice tendrils, everything is working. But you can see at the same time, of course, when you go up with this number, your simulation time will just get a little bit slower here, okay? So now this will be not as responsive as previously, but you get a better resolution in your simulation. And this one, I think that this one is almost working. I think you could just spice this one up a little bit by maybe putting your fluid shape here where it starts over there. Okay, let's do it like this. And also I will go to the force line. I need to rotate this one a little bit to a direction like that maybe. Okay, so that seems to be a better shooting angle to make this one just a little bit more interesting. Let's see what will happen now. Okay, this one is really interesting. I think you still have to do some tweaking. You can think about the voxel size going down even lower, go up with the sub steps, play with the surface tension, also with the stickiness. Let's just put this one to 10 so that the particles will just stick a little bit more towards your collision object. Now you can see how this one is beautifully wrapping around your object. And I would say that this one is already looking pretty amazing. Okay, so this one is really whiskers, really sticky, builds this beautiful, super long, stretchy tendrils. Now this one is breaking up here. Okay, that is quite beautiful. So I would say just to keep this one simple, of course, for a real life example, I would just tweak this one way more. But let's just say that we are quite happy with these settings. But just be sure I'm just scratching the surface here you should definitely play a little bit more with the settings but as i said most important is the box size the step rate the stickiness and the surface tension i would say like these ones should be your main parameters here but now for example when you are happy with your fluid body then you can just go here to your simulation container and click out this mesh container export this one out and now you have to choose how many frames you want for example 300 and choose a directory and, and give this one a name and then you just have to export this one out this one should happen pretty fast. All right, so exporting out my Alembic took like uh, maybe 30 seconds or something like that. Now in your 3D software, you just want to import the Alembic file. Um, in Cinema 4D, you can just merge it. Then you just have to be sure that the scale is set to meters, okay? And the animation frame rate is set to 60. This is looking good. I think like also you should press Control D to just be sure that your frame rate is also set to 60 in your Cinema 4D file. But now you can see that the simulation is coming into your... 3D software. This is colliding as it should. And then of course you also have to maybe in Cinema 4D put this one into a builder and a measure. Let's put this one to 5 and let's put in like a smoother and let's put this one to 1 and 5 for example and let's reduce the voxel size further. So yeah you just have to smooth this one a little bit more. Maybe even more by putting this one into a null and then put in like a smoothing deformer. Let's put this one to 100 for example. So now you can see that this one is really nice and smooth and this one was like a short version of my Patreon training for these splashes. I think my training on Patreon is like probably like an hour long. Okay, so I go through the whole process with the lighting, shading, and also the retiming here to get this beautiful slow motion effect. But I just wanted to also let you know here on YouTube how amazing this software Liquid Gen is. You can definitely already get like beautiful results for your clients, for your simulations on Instagram, wherever you want to share your stuff. But I would 
would say you definitely should try out the 14 days free trial from Jenga FX for the software. It's already that powerful. It's super fast and I just love to work with it. I will definitely work on more training for you guys on my Patreon. So this is just something that I'm totally crazy about right now. So yeah, I'm just totally into liquid simulations right now and I'm happy to have this super fast new tool in my toolkit. I think that this was it for today. Think about joining my Patreon training. But other than that, thank you so much for your time and see you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.